my name is John Oaks and I teach at Macomb Community College South Campus in Warren, Michigan. So when I was young, I would say that math uh, definitely didn't come naturally to me. And I really think that everything takes practice, especially math at many times. But I've always been somewhat of a curious person. And I feel like even today, I would call myself a lifelong learner. And so when I was in kindergarten, I was in a classroom where there was kindergartners and first grade students. And so when we had our kindergarten coloring lessons, our teacher was uh, teaching the first graders math. And so since I'm colorblind, the coloring lessons were, of course, uh, very difficult for me. And so uh, during that time, I tended to watch what the first graders were being taught instead of doing my coloring work. And so I think that had start in a way on seeing some mathematics early is what helped me, but I wouldn't say that math ever really came naturally to me. So I knew I wanted to become a mathematician from quite an early age. So I grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, and that's when the movie Stand and Deliver came out. And so I feel like uh, almost every mathematician I know has seen that movie, but I really just had such a heartwarming feeling when I saw like uh, the story of Jamie Escalante just inspiring all of the students and the story of how caring he was and how he took so much of his own time and personal energy into helping the students that I really felt like one day I knew that's what I wanted to do is just hopefully like help a whole new generation of uh, students learn mathematics. Well, my degree is actually in applied mathematics, but my concentration was statistics. So I still have an interest in statistics and I worked in a statistical computing lab in grad school, but these days I feel like my interest is more in the history of mathematics and international mathematics. And so last year I published a paper in the Mathematic Educator with one of my former students. And it's about the history of bases other than base 10 and their applications. And so I would really encourage anyone to read it if you can find it on the AMATIC website, but it's really was a paper that we wrote to be open to anyone to learn a higher level concept in a, a different way through applications of things you probably would experience all around you. The math that I do isn't just what I do in the classroom. So I can actually think of an example last night where I needed to actually resize a picture. So I set up a proportion and then used it to solve for what I needed to convert the width to. And so that's something simple that I I know lots of people learn about in a basic math class, but feel like, well, I might not ever use it. When I say I do math, I really mean it. I think about different areas in my life where I've learned a, a certain skill and I try to apply it. Well, one of my weak points in math has always been geometry. So even a 
geometry class or trigonometry class, when I'm given the opportunity to teach it, I still tend to shy away from it. But I think all of it stems back to when I was in fifth grade. And that's the first time that we were really introduced to geometry in school. And I missed the entire geometry unit because I had pneumonia. I would say to people who maybe have had difficulties or struggles that that you've encountered that you just think back to maybe what the cause of it might have been and maybe realize well maybe I shouldn't necessarily be so hard on my on myself in every situ situation or in every case one of my proudest accomplishments isn't necessarily a a single event but it's in general seeing a student be successful in my classes and then going on to complete their degree and have a career. So I have former students who are still in contact with me who are dentists and engineers and one who is even a math professor. So that really to me is quite an accomplishment that I have been able to help so many students achieve their dreams and their goals in life. But on a sort of professional level, I would say one of my proudest accomplishments is receiving the Mishmatic uh, Michigan Mathematical Association of Two-Year Colleges uh, Teaching Excellence Award. And I just have always felt honored that my colleagues in the state of Michigan felt highly enough of me and took notice of all of the work I do to help my students succeed that they awarded me this accomplishment or this award that they have through their organization. And it was especially meaningful because my dad was able to be there to see me receive the award. I know he was proud of me and that made me feel like proud of myself as well. Well, there are actually two people who come to my mind when I think of role models in my career, both as a student and as a teacher. And so one of them is Maud Bigford. And so she was actually the honors program coordinator at the college I attended. And when I was looking for colleges, I just wasn't even sure I really wanted to go to college at all. And so I went on a whole lot of college tours. And as soon as I got off of the bus, I looked around at the college and thought, well, this campus is just too big for me. So I turned around and I walked back on the bus. And then along comes Maud, and she personally came on the bus and set me up with the personal tour guide of the campus. And long behold, she convinced me to attend the college that I went to. And the other person is Goodson Nasari, and he's now retired also, but he was the department chair at the college where I got my first teaching position as an adjunct. And I was looking for a job and looking for a job, and I finally just did some cold calling and sent my resume everywhere. And Dr. Nasari was the only person to respond to my emails. And three days before the class started, he sent me an email and said, well, I have a class for you. Can you start in three days? I will say that he did a great job of making me comfortable and giving me help and advice and mentoring as a new teacher. And even over the years, I 
saw him at conferences that we both attended and we have had many chats together about teaching and other things that just were relevant to our careers. One of the pieces of advice I would give anyone is it's never too late to go back to school or learn a new skill. And so if you want to do something, then you should at least try it. You might succeed, you might not, but at least you've given it a go at it. When I first started teaching, there was an 80 year old woman in one of my classes who was just taking the class because she had taking calculus and learning calculus on her bucket list. And so she wanted to learn calculus. And so I saw an 80 year old woman succeed at calculus. And that just warmed my heart that she was so excited that she was back in school, even though she was 80, just remember that it's never too late. So don't worry about your age. Don't worry about anything like that. Just focus on yourself and on what you want to learn. The last few years, I've been trying to learn Korean because I just didn't grow up speaking or writing or reading Korean. And the first semester that I started practicing, I was using an app. And one day, one of my students said to me, you know, what are you doing over there? And I showed them the app. And all of a sudden, by the end of the semester, all of the students in the class were using the app and were trying to learn a new language. And it all started because one of the students told me that his family always spoke Hindi at home, but he couldn't read or, or write it. He could only speak it. And it was always a dream of his to be able to read and write in Hindi. So it was actually quite inspiring to me to be able to use something going on personally in my life to inspire my students. as a overall arching summary, I would just say that I really have always been a firmer, like a firm believer of knowledge of power.